This is Democracy Now! I'm Amy Goodman, as we turn to Yemen, where there are reports hundreds of fighters have been killed and more than 4,000 civilians have fled their homes since the U.S.-backed coalition led by Saudi Arabia and the United Arab Emirates launched an all-out offensive against the key port city of Hodeida last week. Early this morning, coalition aircraft bombarded Hodeida's main airport, wounding dozens and preventing aid groups from reaching parts of the city. This is Yeha Tanani, a father who was displaced from Hodeida. There are people who are stuck and couldn't leave. They told us that some humanitarian organizations are going to send buses, but then they said no buses could come in or out. So we started walking on foot, carrying our children, sitting once in a while for rest, while the Apaches hovered above us. We were scared, not knowing whether we'll be shot or not. Hodeida has been under siege for six days as Saudi Arabia and United Arab Emirates forces attempt to force Houthi rebels to give up control of the vital port city. The attacks expected to be the biggest battle yet in the three-year conflict between the U.S.-backed Saudi-led coalition and Houthi rebels. The United Nations envoy to Yemen, Martin Griffiths, has been in the capital, Sana'a, working towards negotiating the withdrawal of Houthi rebels from Hodeida, leaving the port under the administrative control of the U.N. He's due to report to the U.N. And Security Council later today. Meanwhile, the United Nations says nearly eight and a half million Yemenis are on the verge of famine, with deaths set to rise if shipments of food and medicine through the port come to a halt. More than 70 percent of humanitarian supplies and 90 percent of commercial supplies to all of Yemen pass through this port city of Hodeida. The International Committee of the Red Cross is calling for humanitarian assistance in the region. This is Marie Claire Figali with Red Cross. Today we are at a point where catastrophic is becoming an understatement. What we need to do today is to to open the Sana'a airport at least for the humanitarian uh, um, reasons for the people who need to evacuate, who are sick, who are wounded, to be able to leave. We can no longer afford to close this country so much for the Yemenis. We cannot keep the Yemenis hostage of this of this war. The conflict in Yemen has already killed 15,000 civilians, sparked the world's worst cholera epidemic, with more than a million Yemenis suffering from cholera, pushed the country to the brink of famine. For more, we go back to Boston to speak with Shireen Aladimi, a Yemeni student who just completed her doctoral degree at Harvard University. Her recent piece for In These Times headlined, Attack on Yemen Port Shows U.S.-backed Coalition Willing to Use Starvation as a Weapon. Welcome back to Democracy Now!, Shireen. Talk about what's happening right now in Hodeida in your country of Yemen. Well, thanks so much for having me back. Uh, I think what's happening in Hodeida is a worst-case scenario being played out. Uh, over the last three years, since this attack began on, uh, on Yemen, um, Hodeida was the one, uh, you know, the, the, there were, if there were any red lines drawn, that, was, that would have been Hodeida, because any kind of disruption to the aid that's coming in through the port of Hodeida means the starvation of millions of Yemenis. 8.4 million, like you said, depend on, are, are on the verge of starvation. And another, you know, 22 million people, 80 percent of the population, are relying on humanitarian aid that is coming in through this port of Hodeida. So while the Houthis control the city of Hodeida, uh, the ports and the waters um, have been patrolled by the Saudi-led coalition, and they've been controlling what comes in and out of the country through that port. Um, and, you know, their attack on the city right now, uh, led by the United Arab Emirates, uh, shows that there are just no more red lines in Yemen, that civilian lives uh, no longer matter. Um, there's not even a pretense of civilian lives uh, being, um, you know, of importance in Yemen. Um, can you talk about what this port city, why it is so significant? Um, you have, for example, the— um, Saudi ambassador to Yemen tweeting Saturday, Today, the UAE ambassador to KSA, that's the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, and myself, met with a number of ambassadors of countries to Riyadh. We stress that the Hodeida port remains open and will become a vital lifeline to Yemenis, rather than a source of illegal revenue and smuggled Iranian weapons to the Houthis. There is absolutely no evidence to back up any of those statements. So, for the last three years, we've been hearing that Iran is involved in Yemen, that Iran is smuggling weapons to uh, Yemenis through the port of Hodeida. There is absolutely there's zero evidence that any of this has been taking place. Keep in mind that there is a land, air and sea blockade by the United States, the United Arab Emirates, Saudi Arabia, and all this coalition of countries. And somehow, Iranians are supposed to have magically transported some missiles to Yemen. Um, so there's no evidence to what he's saying. It's 
it's uh, part of the same, you know, talking points that they're in Yemen to deter Iranian influence, uh, again, without any evidence, without any substantial evidence to um, to back up what they're saying. So uh, that is the claim. And uh, to say that Houthis are preventing aid from coming in, again, it makes no sense, given that the Saudis are the ones controlling what comes in and out of the country. And back in November, when they blockaded the port of Hodeida entirely for a couple of pe weeks, people starved to death. And again, that was in response to supposed um, Iranian missiles that were coming into Yemen, uh, even though a U.N. report that was leaked showed that there was you know, this, there was no Iranian—the um, the missiles that came out of Yemen to Saudi Arabia were not from Iran and had more American parts than Iranian parts. So, again, um, this is what been, we've been hearing for three years, but there's not any evidence to support what they're saying. Earlier this month, you tweeted a list of dozens of senators who endorsed continuing U.S. support for Saudi Arabia and Yemen. You wrote, on the 15th anniversary of the Iraq War, these 55 senators voted to continue waging war on Yemen. They voted to continue starving millions to death. They voted to continue bombing Yemenis with U.S. bombs dropped by Saudi-purchased U.S. jets refueled midair by the U.S. Army. Um, hashtag SJRes54. Can you explain the Senate resolution, what uh, Senate Resolution 54 called for, um, and what you feel needs to happen right now? So SJ Res was such an incredible opportunity to once and for all extricate the U.S. from what they're doing in Yemen, from helping the Saudi Arabians wage this war on a country that doesn't pose any threat to Saudi Arabia, the U.S., or any other country. It was a civil war that they got themselves involved in. And um, SJ Res 54 aimed to, uh, you know, the senators that had introduced it, Bernie Sanders and Chris Murphy and Mike Lee, uh, they invoked the War Powers Resolution, which meant that if they had voted in favor of this bill, the U.S. had to legally then, you know, remove um, themselves. We have—we know that there's U.S. special forces on the ground in Saudi Arabia helping with this mission. Uh, there's refueling, there's sales of weapons and so on. Uh, but it didn't go through. You know, they ended up voting to table it, and those 55 senators voted to table the bill. They didn't even end up voting on it. And uh, here was this incredible opportunity to end the war, because given how involved the U.S. is in Yemen and uh, how dependent the Saudi-led coalition is on the uh, support of the United States, this war cannot continue being waged much longer without U.S. support. So, um, so you're saying that you know, the U.S. is think... facilitating this war? Absolutely. In Yemen, this is seen as a U.S.-Saudi war on their country. This is not just the Saudis and Emiratis waging war. The Emiratis and the Saudis are relying on U.S. intelligence. You know, even right now in Hodeida, uh, after, you know, after pleas from certain senators to for the U.S. to not help the Saudi Arabians, um, you know, and the Emiratis uh, uh, try to seize Hodeida, they ended up, in the end, uh, agreeing to provide airstrike uh, targeting. And so, you know, we're helping them along the way. We have been uh, refueling jets mid-air. Mid we are advising their soldiers. We're providing all sorts of assistance to the Saudi Arabian army. And so, without the U.S., the Saudis are, you know, they don't have them—they don't manufacture their own weapons. You know, without U.S. Uh, support and weaponry, they can't continue to wage this war. Um, so we're very much entrenched in this war. And I think right now what needs to happen is another push by the senators um, and, you know, by, the, by Congress uh, to, again, invoke the War Powers Resolution to try to once and for all end any kind of involvement in this war, because we are, you know, entrenching ourselves in more and more apparent war crimes. These are the words of C Senator Chris Murphy, for example, who's saying that there's a U.S. imprint on all on every war crime that takes place in Yemen. Um, so it's not just the Saudis and Emiratis, it's Shireen, the U.S. as well. I wanted to end with the words of Pope Francis, who appealed for peace in Yemen as the Saudi-led coalition continues its assault on Hodeida, speaking to tens of thousands of people in St. Peter's Square in his weekly Sunday address. Con preocupazione, seguo la sorte drammatica. I follow with concern the dramatic fate of the people of Yemen, already exhausted by years of conflict. I appeal to the international community to spare no effort to urgently bring the parties involved to the negotiating table and to avoid a worsening of the already tragic humanitarian situation. That's the Pope on Sunday. Your final 10 second comment, Shireen. 
You know, I hope that your audience listening in realizes how much we've been involved in this country in this war on Yemen. It's an unjust war. Uh, we have no business being de there, and I hope that they would call their senators, write to them, urge them to, um, you know, to end this war on, well, on Yemen. We have to leave it there. Shireen Aladimi, Yemeni scholar, just completed her doctoral degree at Harvard University, speaking out about the role of the U.S. in the Saudi-led war on Yemen. We'll link to your piece and in these times. That does it for our show. If you want to get our daily news head. Lines. Send the word democracy now to uh, 66866. I'm Amy Goodman. Thanks for joining us.